teammate, John Barnack, uh, team leader with Team Inspire Partners, and then also the designated manager broker for Real Broker here in Illinois. Uh, Want to take a few minutes today and just share with you guys about short sales. Uh, something that I think uh, is going to start becoming more and more prevalent as the market continues to correct itself. Uh, and a couple things that I'm going to touch on today. Uh, number one, what is a short sale? Uh, number two, why would the banks uh, allow people to sell their property for less than what they owe? Some of the advantages to the homeowner uh, for selling you know, with the short sale. Uh, you know, don't like to say like the traditional approach versus like uh, our approach uh, to like really create a huge gap there, but there's definitely some uh, a distinction between uh, what we can bring to the table with the resources and experience that we had versus what I see out there uh, happening a lot with uh, short sales. Uh, and then some of the advantages to the homeowner uh, in working with us in our process. Uh, and then obviously I'll, I'll leave a little bit of contact info uh, at the end of this video, uh, just in case you or someone you know is dealing with a short sale. Uh, if they have questions, reach out to me directly and we'd be happy to help them. Uh, so what is a short sale? Basically, uh, the, just a really uh, quick and narrow and right to the point, uh, it's when a bank decides to sell a property for less than what the homeowner owes. Uh, oftentimes we'll include uh, or be split up uh, over uh, multiple debtors. So, you know, oftentimes people have a mortgage, but then they have like HELOCs, there might be HOA associations or uh, things like that that are involved. Uh, short sale will encompass all of them, right? They all get kind of clumped together. Um, first position is always going to have uh, the most powerful uh, position, uh, and then the other ones are often uh, negotiating for what's kind of left over. Uh, contrary to the name, short sale, they're not short at all. Uh, typically six to 24 months, at least in my experience. Uh, usually this option becomes available uh, once a homeowner has fallen behind. Usually about three payments, and they're like starting the foreclosure process. Uh, we may even be able to uh, start a short, like stop a foreclosure uh, up to like days before the sheriff's sale and then engage the bank in a short sale process. Uh, some banks don't allow that because they have certain time frames. It's got to be at least a week. It's got to be at least 30 days before the sale uh, in order to do that. But we have uh, been able to pull that off before in the past. Oftentimes, uh, usually start because of some sort of hardship that occurs. So it could be like a death in the family, like a breadwinner um, passes away, divorce, loss of job. COVID, right? Any, any one of those situations uh, might lead to uh, the bank want, willing to engage into a short sale. Uh, why would the bank even want to let you do a short sale in the first place? Well, number one, um, a negative asset hurts their financial position, right? So a bank is able to lend money uh, based on how many positive assets they have and money in the bank. Every negative asset uh, literally starts to limit the lending power that they have, uh, and that limits the amount of money a bank can make, right? Because a bank gets money and then they lend it out at a higher rate, uh, they keep the difference, right? That's how they're able to make all their money. So if they can't lend money uh, and that's getting cut down on how much they can give out, it's literally limiting how much money uh, they can lend, you know, how much money they can make. Uh, they're gonna save the cost of having to go through like the foreclosure process. Uh, and then also all the work and the resources and time uh, of having to take ownership of that property um, and then also get it sold. Here in the Chicagoland area, uh, that might also include winterizing. Right? We get kind of chilly up here, but it costs money, it takes time, a lot of resources go towards that. So banks don't want to really deal with it uh, if they don't have to. Uh, what are some of the advantages to a homeowner uh, selling in a, in a short sale fashion? Uh, well, number one, saves them from foreclosure. Right? We'll talk about the difference there. Uh, number two, peace of mind. So, you know, it could be very stressful uh, and a bank is trying to foreclose on you. Uh, you don't know what to do. Uh, so a short sale process and working with our team or working with a team that knows what they're doing uh, and then getting that complete could, you know, take a huge load off of your mind. Uh, I know it can be a stressful situation. Uh, foreclosure uh, hits your credit report and affects you for about seven years. Uh, whereas a short sale only affects you for three years. So it gives you the ability to get into purchasing a new home um, and getting that credit back to a strong you know, position uh, much quicker um, if you're doing it on your own. Uh, in most cases, uh, the bank will cover the real estate commission. Uh, so it also saves the homeowner the expense uh, of having to pay like a realtor to help them get that property sold and or go through that process. 
Uh, in some cases, it can prevent like a deficiency judgment. Uh, just helps them save more money or keep more money in their pocket. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in some cases uh, as well, the bank will offer like a relocation uh, fee or relocation assistance. Um, can't guarantee anything like that, uh, but it's definitely something that we always try to uh, quote unquote negotiate for uh, when we're going through the process with someone. So uh, I'm gonna say traditional process, and I'm sorry if that offends some people, but uh, this is just what I see happening uh, with short sales out in the market. Um, most times, uh, if not every single time, uh, a bank, are gonna, bank is gonna want the property to be listed, right? They're gonna wanna see that the homeowner is, is giving some sort of effort or you know, putting something towards trying to get the property sold for at least what they owe. Um, sometimes the bank will dictate what that list price is. Um, every single one that I've worked on, we've had the opportunity to, uh, at least when we initially start, uh, get our, you know, get our um, list price out there. Um, but uh, traditionally, and what I see is like properties will go up on the market, they'll be listed as a short sale, and then you gotta wait for a buyer. Um, oftentimes it takes a while to find a buyer because most people aren't gonna wanna wait, right, that period uh, to deal with short sale, they don't know how to do it. Once a buyer finally does engage, then they can start the negotiating process, right? And we talked about that being anywhere from six to 24 months. Uh, the bank will eventually give you like an approval number, oftentimes will be more than what the market will bear. So like a retail buyer um, you know, might be willing to pay that, they might not be willing to pay that, uh, but the buyer has a choice then to either accept what the bank is willing to take, move forward with closing on the property and taking ownership, or they walk away. If they walk away, then that property goes back on the market, you can relist it as a previously approved short sale, and then you're kind of more in like a traditional uh, type of sale, right? Because you already have that number and did that work. Now, the difference in, in what we do, because we have an in-house cash buyer, uh, we can bring a little bit of a unique strategy to the table. So when we go to list a short sale, uh, we immediately put it on contract like day one. So as soon as it goes on the market, uh, we have that cash buyer in-house, we can write up a contract, we can get it uh, tied up, if you will, or we get it um, under contract with, um, with them to purchase. Uh, now our team, so it eliminates that waiting time, right? So now you're not waiting for a buyer to show up. As soon as you get on the market, uh, we get under contract, and then our team will actually go and negotiate on your behalf. Uh, so our attorney that works with us doesn't charge any attorney fees. Uh, the only caveat to that is if they have to actually like physically go to court and like stop a sheriff's sale for you, right? And that's kind of like the last resort. But an uh, attorney gets compensated on the back end for working with us. Uh, don't have, they don't charge any, anything to the client that they work with. Uh, we will negotiate, we'll do all the work uh, with the homeowner's cooperation, uh, and we'll get that acceptance price uh, from the bank. Now, if it works for us, uh, and I say us, like the cash buyer that we work with, if it works for them, uh, then they just move forward to close, purchase the property, uh, they're in the fix and flip business, so they'll go through that process, uh, and then that property will come back on the market later. Uh, if not, uh, the first thing that we always do is a value dispute. So we will you know, fight with the bank on your behalf, try to get them to come down to our price where it works, uh, so then we can move forward. If they absolutely will not budge, or they can't get to a price that works for uh, our buyer, then what we'll do is we'll put it back on the market as a previously approved short sale, and then uh, we're kind of back into like a more traditional type of sale, still a short sale, but once a retail buyer comes along, uh, one, they already know what the price is, so there's no kind of guesstimate of what that will be. Uh, two, we've already done all the work up front, right, of negotiating and getting the price that we know the bank will take, so they don't have to uh, go through the process or wait for that um, wait for that bank to give the approval. So some of those advantages uh, of working with us is number one, the time saved, right? You're not waiting for a buyer to show up. Uh, you get that right away, and we go to work on your behalf. Little to no attorney fees, right? I don't know what attorneys charge for working on short sales because we've never had to um, pay for one, uh, but I'm sure it's not cheap, right? We always, I always, always ask the bank to pay the real estate commission, and in every single short sale that I've worked on at least, uh, the bank has done that. So that's another fee that the homeowner gets to keep. Uh, we always put in our contracts that um, they relinquish the homeowner uh, from the deficiency judgment. Basically means they don't have to pay the difference. Um, Save, uh, save them from foreclosure. Again, we talked about the seven versus three. Uh, and then we always ask the bank for a relocation fee. Again, 
Um, a lot of these things that I'm sharing with you about how we work and how we operate are just part of our pro right, process and part of our contracts. If the bank is going to agree to work with us, then you know they've got to follow these rules that we're going to ask for you guys. We cannot guarantee that they're going to give you a relocation fee, uh, but we always ask for it, right? Put some money in your pocket, help you move on to the next one. So those are just a couple distinctions and you know, a little bit of you know, our process versus what I see out there in the market, um, kind of like a high level overview of what a short sale is, what are some of the advantages to the homeowner, and what are some of the advantages of the bank uh, in working in that process. Look, this is what we do full time. Uh, we've got over a decade of experience, uh, not just in this area, we've done short sales all over the country. Uh, we've got a strong team that's willing to go to work on your behalf. Uh, we don't charge anything for that because we're very good at getting the bank to pay most of our fees. Um, so if you, if you, if you, a couple things, if you are in a position where, you know, this might be something that could benefit you, I'd be happy to help you. If you know somebody uh, that, you know, would benefit from this information or is about the deal or, you know, face a short sale situation, uh, I would be happy to help them. Uh, short sales could also be a good acquisition strategy. So if you're you know, looking to learn more about short sales uh, or if you're like a real estate investor or if you're like a realtor and you wanna like use that as a lead source, uh, happy to share with you like, some of the techniques that we use to uh, find and help these homeowners. Um, and then most importantly, uh, if, for, if you found this information valuable, uh, if you learned something new here, um, or if you just you know, like to hear me talk or whatever, uh, please like, uh, leave a comment down below, uh, share uh, comments. I'm open to constructive criticism, so uh, let me know how I can make the next video better, right? If there's something that you see I can improve on, uh, like I said, not gonna hurt my feelings. Uh, definitely open to constructive criticism uh, and getting better each and every time so that the information I'm delivering to you guys uh, becomes more valuable. Uh, share the video uh, if you like it that much or if you know someone that could benefit from it um, And then down below uh, in the I don't know if it'll be in the comments yet or if it'll be like right towards the top there um, But I'll leave uh, like a, some contact information probably most likely would be like a meeting link uh, Where you could literally just click on that link. It'll go right to my calendar uh, You'll see all the times I'm available to chat you could pick a time to talk with me if you want to talk further about short sales and or working with us on one uh, and it'll just pop up in my calendar. It'll be ready to go. So uh, thanks, teammates. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for checking this out today. Uh, like I said, I hope it was valuable. I'm working on delivering good content uh, so you guys could learn some of the things that are in my head, um, putting them out there. Uh, so hopefully the whole world can benefit from it. So thanks again for your time. Uh, catch you on the next one.